Hi, I'm Chris Hess, Director of Engineering and Technical Services at Harrington Hoist. Welcome to another edition of Blessings Unlifted. Hi, I'm Greg Butler, Product Support Technician and Lead Trainer at Harrington Hoist. Thank you for accepting our invitation to attend one of our repair schools. Many of our repair school attendees are inexperienced and don't know how to properly use some of the diagnostic test equipment. Uh, so this short video is to help you take some of the mystery out of reading and interpreting the readings on a uh, DVOM as well as using a pair of digital calipers. The digital volt ohm meter or DVOM is sometimes also referred to as a DMM or digital multimeter because it has so many different functions. Uh, the meter we use in our class does have many functions, but since this is an introductory lesson, we'll just stick with the basics. We're going to show you today how to measure AC and DC voltage, how to check resistance, and we'll show you a couple different ways to measure current flow. Voltage is a measure of electrical pressure or electromotive force. It's similar to PSI when we talk about water pressure or air pressure. We must have voltage present in a circuit in order to have a potential for current to flow. There are two types of voltage, AC and DC. AC is alternating current. It's constantly changing from positive to negative and it is represented by the sine wave on our meter. Uh, DC is direct current and it, it, it is positive and negative, and it is represented by a solid and a dashed line on the meter face. Uh, to measure voltage, we will install the meter leads. The red lead is always going to go in the volt ohm position on the far right side of the meter. The black lead is always going to be in the common position on the meter. So after we have our proper PPE on, we can go ahead and measure voltage, and we'll start that by taking our meter and turning it to the AC volt position, okay, where we have the little sine wave. It's always a good idea when you're measuring uh, voltage not to hold both leads, one in each hand, and have a path through your body. So we'll take the red meter lead and we'll clamp it on the red lead on our VFD. Our power comes from the 4P plug in the side of the hoist. It comes straight to the VFD, okay? And anytime we check three-phase power, we want to do that phase-to-phase, -phase, not phase-to-ground. So between the red wire and the blue wire, we have 249 volts. Between the red wire and the black wire, we have 243 volts. And between the blue wire and the black wire, we have 244 volts, okay? So all of our voltage readings should be within 10% of the value listed on the motor data tag. Uh, if we're outside of that range, we'll have to investigate and find out where our problem is in the incoming power supply circuit. To measure DC voltage, we'll need to turn the dial on our DVOM to the DC voltage position, okay? The solid line with the dash line. Uh, if we look at the wiring diagram for the hoist, we can see that the rectifier produces the DC voltage for the, the brake, okay, and the positive lead and the negative lead for the brake uh, are the two dark brown wires, okay. So we'll connect our leads to the positive and negative of the rectifier. Operate the hoist. And we'll see we have about between three and four volts DC going to the brake. Okay. Excellent. A properly operating circuit must have the correct amount of resistance. Too little resistance can cause the circuit protection to open. Too much resistance can cause the circuit to work improperly. The first step to measuring resistance is to select the ohms test position on the meter. So we can do that by going to the omega symbol on the meter here, okay? You'll notice that the meter reads OL. That stands for over limit. 
it means there's more resistance between the two meter leads than what the meter is capable of reading. Okay? The next thing you're going to want to do is we'll short our meter leads together and it's always good to make sure that you're not actually touching the bare metal parts with your hand. Okay? Short the meter leads together. We'll see we have very low resistance now, about 0.3 ohms. If you have a relative button, you can press the, that and that will zero the meter. So we're actually getting a real live resistance reading when we test a component. There's two things that are extremely important to remember when we measure resistance. Number one, the circuit has to be de-energized. Okay, we do not want power in a circuit that we're going to try and check resistance on. Uh, and number two, it's always best to make sure that the component being tested is isolated from the rest of the circuit so that we don't get any erroneous readings from things that are in parallel with, with that component. So we will check the uh, resistance on the primary and secondary side of the transformer. And to do that, we'll make sure that our meter is set to the Ohm's test position and we've already zeroed our leads. If we touch them together, it should come to zero. There we go, okay. So on the primary side, and we've got our, we're de-energized. We check across the wires on the primary side of the transformer and we have about 65 ohms resistance. And on the secondary side of the transformer, we also have that disconnected from the other components. And we should have about 26 ohms resistance on the secondary side. Amperage is the flow of electrons through a conductor. Uh, you can think gallons per minute of water or cubic feet per minute of air. There are several different ways that we could actually measure current flow, whether it was AC or DC, but the safest and easiest way, as well as the industry standard, is really to use an inductive pickup. Uh, an inductive pickup measures the strength of the magnetic field surrounding a conductor as there's current flowing through it. To install our conductive pickup, we'll take the positive and negative leads from our pickup and insert them into the volt ohm and common position on the meter. We'll turn our meter on to read AC volts, millivolts actually, because one millivolt is going to equal one amp. Turn our inductive pickup on, clamp it around the lead we want to measure, only one lead, okay? Uh, you cannot clamp your inductive pickup around an SO cord with four different leads in. We've got to measure one conductor at a time. We'll run the hoist and we see about one millivolt per amp, which on this hoist it's about running about 4.8 to 5 millivolts. Another piece of test equipment that uh, attendees often have difficulty using for the first time is a digital caliper. So we'll quickly go over how to use that. First thing we'll do is turn them on using the green button and the caliper should be zeroed. If it's not with the jaws closed then you can press the zero button. To use the outside jaws, which are on this end, we can measure this. We use that to measure the brake. Clamp the brake in there. We're at 138 and a half thousandths. Okay. If we want to measure chain, we have to use the other end. We use the inside jaws. Chain, we always measure the sum of five links. So we lay it out on our bench. Make sure you pull it tight. Okay? And we get about 4.21 inches. That concludes today's lesson on basic operation of a digital multimeter as well as a pair of digital calipers. Um, we look forward to seeing you at our upcoming repair school. And if you have any questions, please feel free to call Harrington Product Support. Thank you. That concludes another edition of Lessons on Lifting, and thanks for joining the Revolution.